Good evening. I would like to call to order the July 5th, 2022 regular meeting at 6.30 p.m. Can I get a roll call, please? Andrew? Here. Swedek? Here. Augustine? Here. And we will stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have some meeting minutes to approve. I think I have them all in front of me. Individually, too. June oh, and I've got that. Yeah. So I'm going to do them individually. Um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the trustee special meeting from April 26, 2022, for the purpose of comprehensive plan steering committee. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Swedek. All in favor say aye. 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 That's a good one right there. All right. And we've got the June 21st, 2022 regular trustee minutes. Does anyone have any changes to make to that? I do not. No, the only thing I want to mention okay. in these minutes is um, with the fire renewal resolution that we did, halfway down on that front page, it was a typo in there where it said it was a 1.5 mil renewal, and it actually is a 1.0 renewal, um, 1.0 so, mil. So it's it's throughout the entire um, resolution that it's 1.0. I think it's just one time on yeah. page three. Just... Well, just to clear in, and to add to that, the the typo was in the copy that was provided the board um, for the resolution, and so we made the same change at the board of election, um, noted as a typo. So, just just as an FYI, the language um, that will be on the ballot will be a one mil levy. Um, perfect. And that was it. All right, on page seven, I would just like to make a change to the last paragraph. I was contacted by a resident who made a recommendation of a letter requesting funds for the tanker. It was not specific to him. Okay, can you, um, and Ms. Augustine stated that she and Chief Grossenbaugh have been contacted by a resident who made a recommendation of a uh, fund request for the tanker. For a fund request or of a fund request? Um, for a fund request. And not not that just delete everything um, would like to, to the end of tanker, right? All right, a letter from the trustees will be forwarded. And I would just say requesting the funds. I would eliminate the resident soliciting because it wasn't specifically from the resident. It was him requesting. Um, so who are you forwarding the letter to? I forwarded the letter to the resident, but he will be speaking on behalf of Hinckley Township to another entity. Okay, so I'm, I'm just trying to make it clear so people can know what is a letter from the trustees will be forwarded requesting the funds then? Mm -hmm. So I think we need to describe to whom the resident the letter is going to unless it, it's indicated. The, we are requesting funds funds from the Cleveland Foundation. Okay. This resident tends to like to remain anonymous in these types of things and try to be respectful of that for him. So a letter from the trustees will be forwarded to the Cleveland Foundation requesting the funds or for the funding. For the funding? Um, for, for the funding towards the, the fire department anchor. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. With those changes, um, I'd like I to have a change to those minutes as well, okay. Trustee Augustine. I would like to amend the start date for Anthony Newberg. Um, when you approved his hiring, his start date was set as July 25th. I would like to change that to July 11th. I'm not sure that's an amendment. Yeah. I'm not sure we can do that as an amendment to the minutes, to the minutes. because you're 
It's changing the motion. We have to change the motion. Okay, then I'll okay. make an amendment once we Okay, very good. Yeah, Thank you, you can amend the motion okay. on the, for this go round. Perfect. All right. So at this time, I'd like to make a mo motion to approve the trustee regular minutes for June 21st, 2022. Can I get a second? As amended. As amended. Can I get second. A second. Seconded by Ashel. All in favor say aye. 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 And we have a drafted trustee special meeting um, for the purpose of a work session from June 28th, 2022. Does anyone have any changes to that? I do not. No. Perfect. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes um, of the trustee special meeting for the purpose of a work session from June 28th, 2022. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Swedek. All in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. So we will head right over to police. <laughs> okay, well, then we will just move right into that. Um, request to amend the my motion from the June 21st meeting to hire Anthony Newbert amend the start date to July 11th from July 25th. So moved. Second. Uh, Ezra? Yes. Aswidek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. Request trustee approval to replace HVAC unit number three at the police department through Precision Mechanical for a total of $6,934 as discussed at the June 28th work session. So moved. Second. Ashram? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. Request a blanket PO for Shuttler's uniforms in the amount not to exceed $3,200. This is for all the new uniforms for Anthony Newbert. I'm sorry, not to exceed $3,200. So you're going to make a, um, a, a request for appropriations for, for uniforms. Okay. And then I'll prepare the PO up until that amount. All right. <coughs> so moved. Second. Perfect. Good job. And the last Asheville? thing. I... Yes. Oh. Sorry, Chief. Sorry. That's why I did. Yes. No, that's my fault. Oh, <clears throat> yes. I think he's in a hurry to get out tonight. <laughs> I haven't worked out yet today, so that's on my, uh -oh. my agenda if I can fit Me neither, it but I don't think it's going to happen today. So. Uh, and the last thing I have is the swearing in of Anthony Newberg as our new patrolman. Very good. Did he show up tonight? No. Come over here. Not no, okay. Sounds good. Did you join us? I will. You need you to. <clears throat> Good side over here. Repeat after me. I, Anthony W. Newbert. I, Anthony W. Newbert, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the State of Ohio. Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge my duties as an officer for the Police Department of Hinckley Township in Medina County, State of Ohio. Repeat that, please. <laughs> <laughs> and will faithfully discharge my duties. Faithfully discharge my duties. As an officer for the Police Department of Hinckley Township. As an officer. Department in Medina County, Medina County, State of Ohio, State of Ohio. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. got to break it up, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. I regret. <laughs> That was part of the hiring test, actually. How's your memory? Is this your son? Should we swear him in, too? What's that? Is that your son? Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much.
Anything else, Chief? That's it. That's all I've got, folks. Thank you. That's it. Does anybody else have anything for Chief tonight? <clears throat> I do not. Anybody from the audience have anything for Chief Sutton? And virtual. All right. Well, thank you. Virtual is not virtual. Oh, that's right. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much. A brief pause for the PD to depart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you very much. Are you expecting trouble from him? Is that what's going on? Be ready. You'll be seeing much. me in a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, where's the party tonight? Whatever works for I will. I will. See you later. Don't succumb. Don't succumb to that Our peer house. pressure stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All right. Wow. Oh, that's a nice. Chair. I was going to say, do you want one? Hi <laughs> Heather, you're in the. Picture. I was going to say, Heather's <laughs> looking over your shoulder. <laughs> Citizen of the Year will always be looking Thank over you your shoulder. Thank you guys. <laughs> Have a good night. And look, she's in purple again. <laughs> no way. Anyway. Chief Rosenbaugh, you are. Good evening. Thanks. Um, first item is request appropriations for $665.14 for squad 37 and $665.14 for squad 37 too, not to exceed a total of $1,400 for the annual PM, all fluid oil changes filters for both of the squads through TPS Tire Service Center. Done. Second. Yes, Cheryl? Yes. Sweden? Yes. Augustine? Yes. Request appropriations for $1,038 for New American Power Conversion for the Network Center from Lighthouse Solutions. Um, this is a battery backup system, my understanding, for RIT and the station, and I believe it somehow helps the, the, oh, the, beeping. the, the constant beeping, beeping in the watch right, office. Yes, yes. Um, it, it hooks up to the whole network system, so I'd like to request that appropriations. So moved. Is that total? That's total. That's what they, that they told us, yes. With okay. the install. With the install, yeah. Yeah. Second. Yep. Second. Yes, Yes. Swedek. Yes. Augustine. Yes. Last item is request approval to accept the resignations of firefighter paramedic Darcy Clutter and firefighter EMT Matthew Evans effective immediately. You have your letters there for them. Matt's looking at a different career change. And Darcy's um, with her schooling that she's going to. Um, but I'll be discussing a little further with her as a possible independent contractor for uh, our public educator, similar to what we were talking about, um, uh, Lydia to do um, at the next work session. More to come on that. Yeah, more to come on that. Yep. Second. Second. Asheril? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Augustine? Yes. Very sad to see them go. Yep. Um, I just have a question for you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot if you don't have the answer for it, but... Um, and then we talked about a couple different things today, and this did not make it into our conversation. Any word on the tanker? No, they have not got gave anything. We had the tanker go in for PM last week, and it has some significant work that has to be done on the pump. It did pass its pump test, but the um, auto lube for the pump, how or the pump shaft and the gearbox has water in it. I did not get a chance to call Williams today. That was on my list, but obviously other things came up. You were a little busy. I was a little busy. Um, I'm, that's on my list, my first thing to do in the office when uh, our rep gets in there tomorrow to find out about that. Okay. And then we'll see talk from there. It. We'll yeah. talk about it works out yep. the next week. That's, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the board have anything for Chief Rosenbach? Yeah. Anyone from the audience? Anything for Chief Rosenbach? Thank you very much. You Have a good night, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Mr. Bahari. How's everybody doing tonight? Okay. Thanks. Good. Uh, the only thing that I have for tonight is the Kobach fence replacement discussion. Um, followed up with both of them. Um, it's a very close quote, pretty much apples to apples here. Uh, the only thing that I found is that Northeast Fence is going to do an eight foot gate, so an opening gate. Um, and then veterans will be doing a um, pretty much like a four foot just to overlap like it is now to leave a hole. So for the emergency services. So did you guys think about it? Like see which way you want to go. Do you want to replace it? Um, just want to get your thoughts. We Hi. had a discussion with Martha too about how to fund it. Um, 
with reallocating some funding that we'd be able to do it and get this done and move past it. So. Well, do you want to explain that? Yeah, I was before? Say, can you give me a smidgen more? <laughs> Would you like to explain where the cups are coming from? Okay. So you did uh, receive $50,647 from the Medina County Auditor, Auditor for the real estate um, mm -hmm. reimbursement settlement. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was deposited into the general fund. And the discussion with, with Jack and Mike was, is that money could be uh, allocated, uh, allocated for the fencing. Um, this guy's, I think you've all discussed, the pricing continues to go up mm -hmm. on those, and that's a necessary um, project that needs to be completed. And this is money that we did not expect to receive. That being said, what Jack's indicating is there's kind of so that Mike has a, a quote that's only good for a short time. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys decided to pursue that purchase with one of the vendors, uh, your first steps would be reallocating. There isn't enough money right now in the improvement of sites line, the recreation, but the, these are just sample resolute, you know, these are just, uh, the resolutions that would be required three and four on the sheet that Jack provided you. The first one would be reallocating uh, $40,000 from the general fund building line over to the improvement of sites line, which would then provide $60,000 in that line. The next one is a request for amended certificate from the Medina County auditors for the previously unappropriated $50,000, okay? Once that money was re, uh, the amended certificate came and appropriations were, were modified, e the most, next motion would be for the board then to take the 50,000 and then replenish the building line. Perfect. That money would go back in there. So we're not taking money from the building line, but in order to meet the, um, quote deadline we have to do a little maneuvering, maneuvering exactly and how quickly do, how quickly is the turnover on that estimated resource certificate um they meet they meet the third week of every month That's what I thought it was monthly. so it would be it would be in august that we would get the amended certificate and then then the next step would be to accept the amended certificate and the uh, modified appropriation and then it's in there but we don't have any significant demands on that uh, building line right now Not as it stands point. yeah so and and there's still going to be I, I can't remember I think there's a, there's still a significant amount I got the sheet here somewhere but there's a significant amount of money still remaining in that line forty thousand dollars isn't gonna create any problems so Mike what are your quotes it was 51000 if we did wood from Northeast, right? 51000 yeah. if we do chain link, it was 39785 That was the one I was, I was more leaning towards them because of the extended, they had a longer warranty That's than a, the other Yeah, one. they have a five-year warranty where Veterans was a two. And they're also going to do an eight-foot gate versus yeah. Veterans would do a four-foot. But we are still talking about the chain link, right? Yeah. Not the wood. Do you need me to resend this chain link? No, did you get the apples to apples comparison that we talked about at the work session? Yeah. Okay. So that's what I, I talked to them over the phone. So. Okay. But it's like less than a thousand dollar difference. Right? It's it's about a twelve hundred dollar difference between okay. both quotes. So I mean Do you have any preference based on work past work experience? <sighs> I've never worked with other companies, so I, I just, I can't really say. Just, they've all had really good reviews, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's not all I can go off of, is just reviews online, so. Well, the only other thing that Mike had mentioned is this Veterans Fence is a veteran-based company. They hire vets and do all their work with them, and uh, but I don't know that, you know, $1,200, if, if they can make the 
gate change and, and take care of everything else, it's still an additional twelve hundred dollars, though. I guess is what I'm saying. At the end of the day, yeah. I, I would. Just, I think an eight foot gate is important for when you're having the big equipment go in. I mean, they're gonna. This is just more for, like I said, like emergency service. If they have, say, like, if that driveway is blocked up, they can go down okay. the private drive, and you can still get somebody through the opening or the gate. Mm-hmm. So that way, if someone needed medical attention, so I'm pretty sure that's what all those breaks. Because I think there's two breaks in the fence right now mm-hmm. for that. So. I like the idea of a veteran company, but I also like the fact that the other one has the eight foot gate and the five year warranty. I agree. I'd prefer to go with a veteran company, but the five year warranty is significant compared to the other. Okay. So, do you want to make these resolutions so we can have further conversation? Yeah, do I need to move the money first, Martha? Yeah, you're going to need okay. to re- do a resol- uh, number three. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 070522 1. 1, which approves the following reallocation $40,000 from 1000 760 720. Dash zero 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 buildings to one zero 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 dash seven six zero dash seven three zero dash zero zero one one improvement of sites recreation. Second. Asheville? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. Okay. You don't need to make number four yet. And uh, at this, I mean, you can continue with your conversation regarding the fencing. Considering that there is a timeline on them, but I think we'll make the motion tonight. And, um, make a motion to enter into a contract with Job Nimbus for the removal of the existing fence at Kobach Field and installation of new chain link fence in accordance with the quote provided in the amount of. $39,785. It is going to be entering into a contract with NEO Fence Company Incorporated. Yeah, Northeast I Ohio Fence. Yeah. Yep. I think that's just who they use. To Amended as voices. NEO Fence Company <laughs> Incorporated. Second. Okay. So the amount is $39,785. Correct. Okay. Asheville? Yes. Swede? Yes. Augustine? Yes. And who's going to reach out to Ra? Are you going to reach out to Ra to make sure that our timing is good on installation? So yes. it doesn't affect we'll talk about okay, Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Are you going to talk with the mic? Yeah, I can call. Okay. That's fine. I, did they say when they would start, or they just said that they would contact us within seven days, right? They so have to get the materials ordered first. So, so like oh, it could be next year. I like anybody. It's just, <laughs> it could be. You got to get the materials get ordered. So, unfortunately. The way of the world now. Do you want him to move ahead with this resolution? Uh, you before? sure can. Sure. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 070522-02. Two. To submit a request to amend the Hinckley Township Certificate of Estimated Resources to the Medina County Auditor for the purpose of receiving the Medina County Auditor's Office Real Estate Reimbursement Settlement in the amount of $50,647.63. Upon receipt of the amended certificate of estimated resources, the general fund number 1000 revenue and appropriation budgets will be amended to reflect the grant monies. Second. Do I need this last line? You know what, I'm just amend that. I, that. It's not really grant money. We'll delete the word grant just to, to reflect the monies. So um, as, amended. as amended. As amended. Thank you. Who did uh, Melissa, Melissa did, it. did it. Okay. Melissa beat me to it. All right. Asheril? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. <laughs> Cruising through. Very good. 
Anything else, Mr. Bavari? Uh, the only thing I don't have on the list is um, we did receive, you know, we talked about it in the work session, the bid tabs for Valley Brook. Mm -hmm. So um, Trimore was the only one to bid on it. Um, you know, and it is a horrible price. It was a little bit over the engineer's estimate. Um, for the option one, they came in at $478,958 and the engineer's estimate was $450,729.50. So we have all the appropriate documents in hand now. <laughs> and with that being said, we, uh, if we were to entertain both options, there's just not enough money to do it. So we're gonna go with the base bid on that. That's the only thing that we can do at this point. Um, and I will make a motion for a resolution to award the contract for the 2022 Hinckley Township concrete bid for TH357 Valley Brook Boulevard replacement project base bid, Willowbrook Lane to Brook Hollow Oval to Trimore Corporation as the, as the successful bidder in the amount of $478,958 pending the review by the Medina County Prosecutor's Office. Second. Asheril. Yes. Uh, Swartik. Yes. Augustine. Yes. And that's phase one. That's the base bid, yeah. 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 It was base and alternate. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure for people have been listening along all along. Do you want to mention what the other additional amount would have been, Jack? For the uh, part two, I have it here too. If you need it, I, was say, I do not read it. There you go. Just so, just so folks know yeah, why. Yeah, well, could you make us any smaller? <laughs> I know. Really? You want my glasses? No, I already have them on. Uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> For the alternate bid, the amount came in at uh, the estimate was four hundred nine thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars. And the bid came in at four hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred twenty-seven dollars. Very good. So therefore, we could not do both. That's resourceful. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Keep done. Well done. That was resourceful. I've not seen that done before. Just learned something new. You'll get old. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Right. I just said because you're old. I get it. Right there with you. All right. Anything else for service? That'll do it for me. Very good. <laughs> Don't forget your things in the office. Yeah. Well, there is one, one last thing was the, um, because uh, Mike and I and Martha had a discussion about how they were allocating hours to the employees, to the different departments. And uh, because of that, we need to move some funding over to cover hours that weren't, weren't anticipated. So with that being said, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 070522-03. Three. Three. Four? Three. Three. N no, concrete. It was uh, three. Was four, yeah. Yep. Four? Four. Which approves the following reallocation. $5,000 from 1000-760-740-2022. Machinery, equipment, and furniture to 1000 120 1900000 salaries. Second. And just for discussion, the, the service department, when they do work for other departments, their work comes out of salary line. So, with all the work they've been doing for the general fund, like, you know, painting the bays and the, the roofs and the field maintenance that or you know the repairs necessary that's been coming out of the general fund salary lines we just want to buffer that up so they can continue that all right asheril yes swidek yes augustine yes um one thing that i had heard over fourth of july weekend i had posted a pretty picture of our marquee sign saying happy fourth of july and some folks from around Hinkley said, wow, that sign is in need of some repair. Um, I don't know if you've looked at it. I think you have. We have in the past. <laughs> we know. So just probably have to have conversations soon as to how we will handle that sign. 
Chris Studer sent me that exact rough. same picture that you posted on, um, well, I mean, not that, I, I'm sure you <laughs> took that picture, but the same shot on Friday mm -hmm. to possibly use on the website. <laughs> I don't think we want to use this on the website. I mean, that was the first thing that I noticed yeah. is that's looking pretty rough. So past yeah. boards, I think, have had just uh, I actually I think specifically there was a past trustee that had a suggestion of an electric electric sign that would make it easier for staff here. But I don't know that we would want to see an electric sign in no. town center. So um, we really haven't pursued anything. And so we'll probably have a conversation maybe at the next work session. About yeah, well, the actual sign portion, that can be a later discussion. The, mm -hmm. the structure itself, all the wood is rotted at the base. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, pretty rough. It's pretty mm -hmm. bad. But it's still standing. <laughs> it's job security, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, already, we're already tailing up the next job for you. That's all right. <laughs> we'll take care of it. Thank you, Mike. Do you guys have anything else for Mike before he goes? No, good evening. You guys too. Does anyone from the audience have anything for Mr. Bahari? Okay. Thank you. I was actually going to text you on Friday. I was driving down Bellas with my son, and I was mm -hmm. like, it's the first time I've been on it. It's really, <laughs> you guys really did a great job on that. Yeah, that's what the Noe did a very good job. So, yeah, um, they do good work. Martha, can you send me a copy of the resolution to send to Angie then? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I don't have anything for zoning or cemeteries. Trustee Astral, the floor is yours. Okay. Just a reminder that because of the 4th of July holiday, Kimball will be picking up trash on Saturday, July 9th this week, not on Friday. And the other thing that I wanted to discuss with you both, I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at what I sent you with the renderings of the website so far. Yes. Um, wanted to discuss specifically the community tab because we were kind of talking about um, what are we going to put on that page on the community tab and through brainstorming I said you know the website is I look at it you know Mark and I both have kind of described it a couple of different times as this is our advertisement for the township it's the website so we want it to be um, a source that is helping not only our existing residents, but anybody that may be thinking about moving to Hinkley or coming to Hinkley to work. So we had talked about adding in under the community tab, maybe some different links to websites or Facebook pages for different organizations and businesses within the township. And I know that we talked about a couple months ago, not having on the, on the, cover page of our website, you know, promoting other um, events throughout the township. And I'm not talking about promoting um, events or anything like that, but using it as a source for like Highland Local Schools, um, for the churches in town, organizations like the Hinkley Women's Club, the Chamber, the Garden Club. We did talk about um, security with this it would this be something that would jeopardize the security of our website if we put links in there and mark said absolutely not it would have no impact on the security of our website if there's um an insecure website link it just means that 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 site that's insecure would not pass on to our our website so i wanted to know your thoughts on that i I would prefer not to just because once once if, if you let in Bob and then Dave comes over and says, Hey, I went in too now and you know, not knowing exactly what he's about, I think that creates an issue for us. Okay. I mean, I guess with, with government and schools, maybe that's something you could entertain. Okay. Uh, but beyond that, I don't think I would do go into private. Okay. I'm torn on it because I would I, I think that when you have a community section like that, it should be about community. It should be about all the things that make Hinkley great, right? Mm -hmm. In Met Cleveland Metro Parks, all types of different um, things that we could put on there. Um, but I think it does muddy the waters and we are chronically updating it. And I just got an email today, somebody saying, well, I noticed you have something on your website and I can't tell you how many times I get these emails. And 
they're not even pertinent, but it's just somebody who wants us to advertise for them in some capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we're doing is free advertising. And I just um, think we probably should just stick with Hinkley Township stuff. On so there. what if it was um, like nonprofit, like um, even then it's the good. schools, um, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. I look at the school almost governmental versus nonprofit. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I don't feel strongly about this one way or the yeah. other. I was just thinking, you know, would this be a good a good thing to have on that tab so it's easy for people to find things? Mm -hmm. Can I think about it a little bit more? Yeah. When so, you're talking nonprofit, it's the chamber. It's now it's the Hinkley Car Club has a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, I know. I thought about that because I thought about there's literally dozens, dozens of things that you could put on there. So. Um, I just kind of wanted to start the conversation today. I'm going to have another meeting with them um, next week, I think on the 12th. So, and you're going to shy away from the red. That we was, are we are eliminating the okay. red. It's, I'm looking for that email that I sent you guys. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Do you want me to send it to you? Uh, what day did I send it? Was it Six Friday? 24. Um, Which one are you looking at? Looking at July 1. Six, oh, you're right. It is July 1. I'm sorry. There were two of them there, oh. I think. July 1st. Um, and then what's going to go under the business section next to community? When is your next meeting? Uh, the 12th. So I think they're planning on using um, a lot of the same that's in the current, you know, not necessarily omitting, but, you know, adding to it if we can make it better. So business, we did not even get, um, we didn't even discuss that. We just talked as far as the community and they are changing the header color from red. We talked about a light blue or a light gray. Um, the flag's gonna be bigger. I would recommend blue. Um, something I didn't consider when we were doing the comprehensive plan stuff with the steering committee is that we had, I think two or three folks that were colorblind. So they weren't able to see a lot of the things we were, we were giving them. And the red and the green are ones colors to stay away from. Um, they said that blue was easiest for them to see. So it's just a suggestion. Um, I like the how do I at the top with the search option right away. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really liked that. Yeah, I really like the setup of it. I'm not sure about the picture that's there. I think it's a beautiful picture, but I don't know that it represents pink. Well, we're shirt. going to have um, four or five photos. Okay of the town. So that was just the one that they got the screenshot of. Yeah. But I think it looks really good. I We were um, really excited with what they presented us with so far. Mm -hmm. um, they are hoping that they actually have an actual link that we can click on oh, that'd be on great. itself so that we can all navigate through it and see, you know, what we like about this tab, what we don't like about that tab. Did you get a chance to, did you both get a chance to look at the calendar? Yes. I the like proposed the proposed calendar. calendar. Mm -hmm. I did. I like that. I did not. I, I really like the calendar mm -hmm. and I like, we were talking about using graphics for like just this, the same graphic. Maybe it's the flag for the regular trustee meetings. Um, and just using the same graphics for our regular meetings that we're always just having, ECA, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but then if there's a special thing, then we can just take a photo that I'm sure there's photos, you know, all over the place of <laughs> different events that we would have on there. Perfect. Um, what did you think about the quick links? We discussed this at length and we came up with, we thought the best six topics would be the agenda. Um, the meeting minutes in YouTube, mm -hmm. forms and permits, concerns, Kimball, and zoning. We thought those would be, and you're going to be able to access all that information at the top also in the header um, with the different departments, but we thought that those would be the best 
the best options to have for the quick link. So report a concern is a little concerning to me. I did not like that wording either. Yeah. Um, I, I did not like that wording either, but Suzanne was more, she liked the fact that somebody could get, because, you know, Suzanne's having a hard time shifting the fact that our contact information right now is at the top of the website and now it's going to be at the bottom of the website. Mm -hmm. So Suzanne um, wanted to make sure it was easy for someone to just click on something and get the, the phone number. So I don't, I'm like, how often do people... Maybe it should just be contact us or something like that. When okay. I when I hit see report a concern, I'm thinking, is this a police concern? Is this a zoning concern? What kind of... Where is this taking me? That's what concerns me. It's contact. <laughs> That's concerning. That's what concerns you? <laughs> Every other site, it's contact. Contact us or, yeah, something of that nature. Okay. Good feedback. Uh, yeah, July 12th. So it was our next meeting. So when is the next? Um, bear with me. Oh, so that'll be before or after the trustee work session? After. Okay. So we won't be able to talk about it then. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to contact her tomorrow and let her know what we are discussing today. Because I told her we would talk about the community tab today. And then I will let her know that about the concerns. We'll do contact us. Um, and I'll let her know that we liked the calendar mm -hmm. option. Honestly, when I think of community, I I think the things that we most get questions about and often are saying, here's the phone number, here's the contact for, is county agencies. So, for instance, water and sewer, um, recycling, the commissioners, maybe those should be the links in community. That we could just say, well, if you go to our website, it's right under the community tab. You can click and go straight to the commissioner's website for, and get their contact information. It's just for thought. government. Uh, yeah, it's just a thought because I think that they're linked a lot of times and people will say, well, I've got this problem. We say, well, that's not really a Hinkley Township issue. It's more health department issue. And that way they could just go straight in and connect. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you think about that, Jen? Yeah, that works. It's... Mm -hmm. When I was running the Facebook page, a lot of the things that I was sharing were county agency things. Um, that is a good point. There is a county directory, and that would be a good thing to put in there. Is this the calendar you're talking about? Yeah. There's uh, the specific one that they sent. The calendar demo. Yeah, there's a specific one in that link. And I like that the mailing address is there. I can't tell you how many times people have said, well, what's the mailing address for Hinkley Township? It's not on our website right now. Uh, we also talked about, um, which I thought was a really good suggestion because I have had to take, I can't even tell you how many times, screenshots of our front page of our website and circle the newsletter because people still can't find it. So we talked about maybe doing a pop-up for the first couple of months so that when you are on the website visiting it, um, people can see, um, oh, there it is, because it pops up like literally right in your face. Um, Jack, why can't I post? Or maybe report a concern becomes a newsletter. People can just tab down to the phone number to contact us because it's right at the bottom of the page. Fine. Just food for thought. Yeah. But I think I find it all resounded to you. It's right. very exciting. It looks good. Yeah, it's very exciting. I'm very excited about it. So the other two things I wanted to talk to you both about, because I talked to um, Renee about this now, you know, we talked about we're going to have the links on there also for um, YouTube and Facebook. The YouTube um, wanted to make sure that you were both uh, on board with me starting the process of creating the YouTube channel. We're not going to be using it at this point, but it's going to be up and ready to go for when the website's ready to have a link.
Go for it. <laughs> I was going to say, is the yeah. silence. I have no problem with you starting it. Um, I think it's a good idea probably to secure the name and get it started. Okay. And then we talked about um, we talked about the fact that we are not moving forward with the Facebook page. We have not voted on that yet. But I did talk to Renee about how the best way to go about it, because I thought she might she might be a good resource for that with the fact that we already have a current Facebook page, but it's currently locked because we can't get into it. So I think the account was suspended by the, the, one of the trustees. I don't know for sure. It was deactivated. Um, the, the page was deactivated. So here are the options with that. If we decide to go back to that is um, email Facebook, but do you have any idea whose email was used to establish that? Mm -hmm. Well, I started it, but I transferred everything over to Trustee Schulte. Okay, so everything was under Ray's email. Okay. Um, I was told if we email Facebook with that email address, um, they can send you a reset link, but that email is also... Um, the link goes to that email. Right, and that email is suspended. That's one of the ones that we suspended. Um, at the beginning of the year. So we can reactivate it if we want to. Um, or what Renee had suggested is just starting a new page because she said there were only six likes on that page and we can then link the page. Oh gosh, there were more than that. I don't know. That's, were, like, I, I don't, that's, that's what Renee, because she went, she, you know, she was searching on it today but we were talking about it. So she said we could link the two pages and I wanted to know if we move forward with that, what is the best, what you two would prefer to see with the direction? <laughs> you know, I, I know, I do not want Facebook. I don't, I think it's just another uh, thing that you have to track and worry about public records requests and anything that goes on there should be something that's already on this site anyway. That's my opinion. I think, um, and I was an advocate last year for eliminating or rescinding the motion about not having any social media at all, because I think what it does is it was um, kind of crippling future boards. So I think you're in the state right now where you're working on this and you have a great team that you're working with it with proximity. Why don't we do our due diligence, see if we can bring the old one back up, all of the language that was in it was already approved by the prosecutor's office. And that way, at least we have access to it. If not this board, then maybe the next board. I don't, I'm still debating on how I feel about it because the records requests that we're getting now are just so many. Mm -hmm. um, I do see that as an air, another area of records requests that I just mm -hmm. don't know that we have the time for, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not opposed to it either. Mm -hmm. I think, but I think we should at least see if we can have, get access to that old page. And I mean, I'm completely open also with other, you know, if it's not going to be that route is, you know, the newsletter comes out once a month and the Hinkley record comes out once a month. So updating, you know, what was discussed and keeping people, um, on top of that, you know, not without having to watch, you know, not everybody's going to want to watch the whole long YouTube video. So, you know, the key points of the meeting without having to wait. <clears throat> so every time you do this, you're creating a public record. Right. right. That That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I shouldn't call it a problem, but it's an added burden on mm -hmm. all, an already extremely cumbersome. Mm -hmm. and, and we just keep getting more and more avenues for public records mm -hmm. requests doc or public documents mm -hmm. and even to track them which is just something I, I needed to clarify and I'm glad you know you brought it up but I'm assuming that the newsletters are saved in hard, hard copy somewhere as a public document because some of it is is a content that's being created just for that that so every time you create one of those mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that you retain it mm -hmm. and that you have a retention period for it mm -hmm. when something's a hard when you can make a hard copy of it that's fine we can put it label it retain it mm -hmm. but when it starts to be an electronic medium 
you know, I, I don't have the time nor inclination to be tracking any new content on any of these. I'm, I'm assuming someone will be whose responsibility it is. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to find someone whose job, and it's, I don't think it's going to be Suzanne. Mm -hmm. And trustees come and go. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that, but they do. And, um, you know, who's to know that that person followed up or mm -hmm. provided everything. So I would, I would, I would be cautious mm -hmm. about that. You know, the YouTube is, is a simple, you can, we talked about this. You can download the zoom meetings mm -hmm. onto an external hard drive. We can maintain a retention period and have a hard drive every year. Mm -hmm. And then we, we funnel it. We have a process, right? Mm -hmm. That's your meeting. If someone, we have meeting minutes. We have um, the newsletter. Mm -hmm. We have the website that you're putting significant amount of money into to make accessible for people. Mm -hmm. And to Jack's point about Facebook, you know, it's fine to just cut and paste and put already um, information that already exists on the website. But again, who's going to do that? Mm -hmm. And you have to assure that all you're doing is copying something that there already is a public record for. And anytime you veer from that, you are creating a brand new public record mm -hmm. that now we have to manage. But why duplicate that effort if it's already? Well, no, I'm just saying, right. I'm just making it clear that whatever direction the board goes in, mm -hmm. this there's a you're adding more work on to a small mm -hmm. uh, group of people mm -hmm. who are already and I and I understand that um and also just to I when I had initially brought it up and I would still stand with this is to have commenting turned off and I do agree that the meeting minutes are there and the website has all that information but it is always it's delayed so it's not really current events when it is two weeks later and who's so going to write a synopsis of the meeting though I mean, that's what the YouTube is. Then we, exactly. Yeah. Then you have to it, have a meeting to put the words together to put on Facebook. Because it have can't to, be any of us that write right. and then a description of the meeting because then, again, mm -hmm. we, we we're all creating a public record that we have to sit and I approve and, and that. So, I I mean, I understand. I, I understand. But I will say that if there is an interest by the public Mm -hmm. to access some information the township has, uh, especially with the Zoom technology, there's ample opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, that's where we're at. I almost feel that, that Facebook at this juncture is antiquated. If you have your meetings on YouTube and you have the meeting minutes and you have the newsletter, I think um, we already, at the time when I created Facebook back in 2017, there were no other Facebook pages for Hinkley Township. Now that I think there's like three, mm -hmm. I mean, how many different avenues do you need for news? Mm -hmm. Well, because this would be factual not right. opinion. Right. And I get that. I, I mean, if anybody gets that, I get that, mm -hmm. but, um, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not opposed to it, but I just, I worry about the records because then you've got to download that page every day. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only if download. it's only if it's new content. If this is information that's just cut it and pasted from our website and put on a Facebook page, comments are turned off, everything, and we're not creating a new public document. And we can, you know, obviously we can maintain the Facebook page, and nothing ever gets deleted off of it. It, you know, it's always there. Um, but I think you just don't, I don't even know if likes are considered a public record. I have no idea. They are. And so I would turn anything off mm -hmm. that creates something new. Mm -hmm. If you want to have another uh, format for people to access information, I, I'm not opposed to that. Mm -hmm. But only. Well, I think her goal was to get something out sooner. Correct? Right. Right. So in trying to get something out sooner, that's going to be a record, right? You know, right? Because it'll be posted there first, and we couldn't do that, right? 
What do you mean? Like what? What Jack saying when you're saying take something from the website and copy and paste it, that would not be what I would be thinking. I would be thinking something instant. So instead of having to wait, you know, two weeks for things to be approved and loaded onto the website, you could post something there instantly. And again, my recommendation would be if you wanted to do something like that then you need to create an outside group that would manage something like that because that that unto itself is a big i mean and there's already three of them there's already ex three exactly i mean that. i think you're just creating another alter universe for everything and, and and really at some point we have to say what happens here right here on there in the minutes, this is township government. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how many times to say it. If you guys don't approve it, if you don't have a roll call vote, it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Same with the zoning commission, same with the BZA. Mm -hmm. You need to exist in this universe. Okay, so Sorry. we'll just go ahead. <laughs> well, let me tell you, and how I will start the process <laughs> with you two. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Jeez, I thought this was. So gonna Twitter's not going to have me though. Thanks for bringing it up, Sam. Sarcasm. You can start JB's Hinkley Twitter group. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But it does have the Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at the bottom of the little And rendering. you know, uh, uh, very briefly, I will tell you why I'm so adamant about this. It's because there are mucho, mucho fines for not retaining a public record. There are people that go around the country, and they come in and they ask for a public record. That's, that's their scam. That's their grift. I didn't realize you were fluent in Spanish. And not. That's about it. I can. I think I can swear. Though I did accidentally drive in Mexico a couple that. years ago, and it I got us out. Year. It was last year. Yeah. I got us accidentally drove into Mexico. She did. I did. My husband didn't even know until the Spanish, until the Mexican police. <laughs> okay, I've never driven there before. I've only flown there. But isn't there like a really big like gate? gate? You would think. No. <laughs> Now? now this is it's a public a record, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you you would think they would say, welcome to Mexico. Yes, your color palette will be tested. Oh, okay. So yeah, I've been I've been really impressed with the communication and what they presented us with. It's been um I really good and it's the little things. Like they were pointing things out that I had shown them examples of that they did it. In, in their rendering. So it was exciting. Can't wait till the big unveiling of it. There won't be a Facebook link on it though. So. <laughs> Van? Oh, I'm good. Very good. Thank you for your work on the website. It looks great. I'm going to say Kimball again. Kimball again? She did Kimball. Oh, you did? Yes, we are. You didn't put a check mark by it. I did not. Oh my God. Are you not listening to me? I, was a I mean, you're just kidding. <laughs> Trusty sweating. Just tuning me out. Um, we talked about this at the last meeting with uh, Fabrizi Trucking. They had some retainage due that they uh, got lost in the paperwork, and we agreed to uh, go ahead and pay that out from the last project they did. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 070-522-05. Authorizing payment of the retainage for the 2020 Salem Court replacement project to Fabrizi Trucking in the amount of $11,748.30. Second. Asher? Yes. Swede? Yes. Obviously, yes. We're done with that paper now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can look at paper. Um, I don't know if you folks want to talk about it. There was an email about fireworks. 
Did you see that one? I encouraged her to e email the board about the fireworks. Okay. She shared a concern with me. Somebody called asking if we would opt out of the uh, state's firework law um, due to stress that fireworks put on military veterans and pets and everything else. I don't know that we want to look at that for next year. Uh, it was definitely too late to do it for this year. What just it passed on? Uh, I think it was just effective July 1st or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Didn't we discuss it with Jess like a couple months ago when it was made? I thought we had discussed it with him already. And we had said that we were going to follow the state guidelines. Yeah. I like that idea. As I thought we were going to follow the state guidelines. And I mean, these are all cities where the homes are much closer together. So it's probably there's a lot more liability there and they all have their own city displays. Well, I think like Brunswick Hills did, did um, make some type of a language about fireworks, um, their township. Uh, I think maybe Copley. So, I, I mean, it doesn't matter city versus township. The question is, do we want to put any type of restriction on it? And I'll be honest, I like fireworks. So mm -hmm. I think is, I don't know, because I don't, you know, suffer from any of that and I'm not a nervous animal, but I mean, is there really a big difference between fireworks and gunfire at the end of the day? You know, gunfire is allowed. Why would we say no to fireworks? Because she does specifically say the animals yeah. and and the veterans. And so I, I, I hear I, her I concerns, but absolutely. in my mind, it's, it's one night, you know. Um, or three. <laughs> Well, it's the way the way the law reads is, from what I understand it, is they can set off the fireworks the weekend before the holiday. They can set off the weekend. They can set off the weekend after the holiday, and July third, um, fourth, or fifth. So it's a very small window of time yeah. when they actually. I thought they extended it beyond Fourth of July for other holidays other holidays mm -hmm. maybe they did but i i think i think it's all within the same it's the weekend before and the weekend after maybe we should get the language for the state's new legislation and then have conversation so we at least have a little bit more knowledge about it okay I, st I just think it's something that's very very difficult to police even if we were to say okay it's it's not going to be we're not going to follow the state law and we're going to say no to fireworks in Hinkley. I think it's something that's very difficult to police because when people call it in, the fireworks are already being set off. So by the time the police get out there and find the location, those people are done. Well, or displays. they're just driving around and there's like 20 houses doing it. Well, which house right. is it? Right, <laughs> right. That's, I just, I think, I think it's opening up a can of worms personally. I brought up the Ohio. It's way more than just the Fourth of July. I yeah. thought so. I thought it's it was one national holiday, right? It's July third, fourth, fifth, Fridays and Saturdays, and Sundays immediately preceding or following mm -hmm. Labor Day, first Monday in September, and then that Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding that Monday, mm -hmm. Diwali, which is the Indian uh, New Year's. New Year's Eve from 4 p.m. to 11.59, New Year's Day from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m., mm -hmm. Chinese New Year, Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> Memorial Day weekend, which is the last Martha Monday Cinco de Mayo. Day, it's Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> and got my puppets. She's got mucho fireworks. However, you can only use 1.3 G consumer grade fireworks purchased from an Ohio licensed dealer. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a fireworks expert, but I don't know the difference between a 1.3 and a 1.4. How the hell do you tell them blowing up the air? Well, the, and the, the firework can, can planet is in. Up? It's, oh, yeah, the difference is 0.1 time. Just so just Thank you, Tom. Let's see what it says. There is an opt out. Most people aren't going to have the receipt handy. What do you buy? But they don't ask you anymore. Are you going to leave Ohio to blow these off? Mm -hmm. Is that what they I've never bought fireworks before, so I don't know. Oh, I can't even believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sparklers from Giant Eagle. Um, <laughs> we did last year upgrade to the smoke bombs from Giant Eagle. Oh, okay. uh, 
Well, yeah. you're d- double digits now. Yeah, yeah. 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 sound and soon. Yeah. <laughs> and local governments establish prohibitions on fireworks discharging in their community. Yes, any political subdivision through local ordinances can set additional restrictions on the dates and times of the fireworks uh, that can be discharged, or they can opt out of allowing, that is an IE ban altogether, the discharge of consumer fireworks within their jurisdiction. I just feel so that, that does include conscience. Yes, yeah, it does. And, and, and I know that we can get language from townships around us that have um, put together language. I, I just the, uh, feel that we should. It said you can state. use 1.3. Not, not above 1.4. Yeah. So, so like one, one mortar. 1.3 one. is the classification given to large fireworks and pyrotechnics you see on shows put on by cities and events. Formerly known as Class B, you typically need I'm training sorry, and a permit. It, I read it backwards. It's 1.4. So apparently the larger the number, the smaller the firework. Like steel gauges, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but one firework versus a show. No, which has to do with the, the propellant, yes. how, how high it goes, mm-hmm. and how big it goes. Yeah, 1.4, you don't need any training or anything. Blow, right. blow your yeah, hand so off if you want. Right. Just light the wick and run. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. And as a reminder to <laughs> everyone out there who may be setting off fireworks, please do not bring in the boxes into your house after you set them off. Those go in the bonfire. <laughs> because a 7,000 square foot home in Bath Township just burned down yesterday because they brought in their set off boxes oh, really? and put them right next to the ones they didn't get to. Oh, oh gosh. People start broken the garage too, so. Yeah. So I thought I would mention that since we do still have another whole weekend. You can set off your fireworks. She just announced it. Keep we the boxes no outside. Well, we're gearing up for Labor Day. For this month. For this month. All right. Anything else, Trustee Swedek? Yes. Uh, reference that uh, 25 River Road yes. with the OR. When I pulled up this on the ORC, it, it says Board of Health District can issue the order. Mm-hmm. And then it says lower, lower down, Board of Health may declare it a public nuisance, order to be removed. And then the board may, by its officers and employees, remove a bait or alter. So is that is that why we're going through the prosecutor's office to get permission to do that mm-hmm. under the order? So it was it's right. not stated in the RC that we have authority to do it. We have to get the resolution made, and okay. then That's we have the authority. Okay. And actually, it's on my agenda, but I'm going to table it because I didn't get the resolution yet. Okay. Um. The past week, uh, it's my belief that Trustees Corner article is to be township information coming from the Board of Trustees for the township. I had replied to your email, the draft, uh, the Trustee Corner article indicated I thought that the first paragraph was inappropriate, and uh, but you chose to submit it. And as such, I'm no longer going to participate in creating content for that article. Uh, I'm also requesting the board to end its use. I don't think it should be anything of opinion or editorial or whatever. Anyone in wishing to infor- uh, disseminate information not representative of the board can do that through a private venue. So that's my point on that. If you want to discuss ending that trustee corner article, I would like to entertain that. But if you feel strongly that you still want to do it, I, like I said, I will not participate in that. In the Hinkley record or in the Both. newsletter? So it's, Both. It's, it was specifically from me. Um, we never. It's called the Trustees Corner. Right, but it's a message from Melissa Augustine in the newsletter. It was already submitted to the Hinkley record. It's not something we have ever submitted to each other for as a draft for changes. Well, your email said draft. Right, the email, but it was a copy and paste of what was already submitted to the Hinkley record. And it was just me explaining why I voted the way I did. I think that was entirely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. It was, I think anything in there should be representative of us as a board. And that, for that reason, that's why I made my statement. Mm-hmm. 
as a community member that read that article felt this is Natasha Kayla's 1809 Ridge Road. It felt a little bit like a personal campaign, so I would tend to agree that if that content is not supposed to be personal, personal opinions, that that article was slightly skewed towards your opinion, and I, I would agree that Jack Jack's comment that, that it's my it was my month. It's my picture, and it says message from Trustee Augustine. I don't know how much more to clarify. It wasn't really a campaign. It was just an explanation because I had gotten a few questions, and I thought, well, I'm just going to address why I voted the way I did. It was not a tiny vote. It was something that a lot of people had had conversation about and had been a part of, and I wanted to address the people that questioned my vote. And that's what you're saying right now is I, and it's not about you. It's about the township, it's about the board, it's about the people, it's about the community, it's not about you. Absolutely. And that's what I was representing, is I was representing in my vote the way the people that I spoke to wanted me to vote. And you already did that in the meeting as well. But so some, people meetings. Meetings. Some, people meetings. Meetings. some people don't attend the meetings. Some people don't attend the meetings. And that's why I had gotten questions about it. Um, I like the trustee corner. I like that it's a way that we can um, communicate with the residents who do not come to the meetings. They do not watch the meetings. They're not super involved within the government, but they do care. That's why they read the trustee corner. So I like that we do that. I, I can see, um, I don't have it in front of me, what it said, but I can definitely see, and, and I don't disagree with Jack, that it was, it should be, I feel it should be, it is called the trustee corner. It should be, and as I have always trying to written mine is, it's coming from the board. These are the things that we have discussed. These are um, the decisions that were made. It doesn't really matter why, if you want to know why, if you're not getting enough information, because you only have 300 words, if you're not getting enough information, there are other resources that you can go to, to see um, the back and forth and deliberating of the decisions. But I feel that it should be something that comes, we don't all have to agree. And we obviously have many times sat at this table and disagreed, but we do respect the process. We do respect that it is a board and the majority rules. And I feel that when information is put out there to the public, it should be the voice of the board, not just one person on the board. Noted. I mean, I can't go back in time and change what I wrote to the Hinckley record. It, I, this is my fourth year writing a trustee corner. So I've never had a board tell me that it was inappropriate in any way to share my thoughts for my trustee corner with my name on it and my picture on it. And I would never do that to either one of you. I wouldn't put that in a trustee corner article. All right, that's all I have. Will you be continue? Will you do it next? This is no, next I, month in the year. I don't know. It is him. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do it next month and you can think about? Or are you a hard no on it? I think that uh, I am a hard no on that. Okay. okay. Do you have anything else, Trustee Swedek? No, ma'am. All right, we have um, the comprehensive plan audit memorandum. I made copies for you guys. This is provided by OHM. He sent it this morning. I don't know if you had an opportunity to read through it. Um, this is a five page document. He also incorporated the survey results from the 1,240 responses that we garnered from the community. And um, if we are in agreement on the language that has been presented by OHM planning, legal has told me um, we can make a motion to um, amend the 2015 comprehensive plan to include this information. I didn't know if you wanted some more time to review it. I would like more time to review it and I would also like um, for us to discuss it. 
Um, the biggest thing that really sticks out to me that I want to discuss further with the board is updating the zoning map to match up town center area with the future land map. So I was just playing around this afternoon on the auditor's site and I made copies of this for each of you also. And it's not 100% accurate because I didn't have a scale, but, and I know like, um, if you see the green, what's outlined in green is what is currently um, developed business right now. What is in the red is what is currently B2, not even half, not even half of the existing land in B2 is even developed for business. It's a very underdeveloped area. And the future use map is the yellow, which is like quadrupling what we currently have. And I wanted to discuss that with both of you because, and I, I mean, I don't know if this is something that Tom Wilson could do, that he could develop something that's a little bit more visually appe appealing, but this is very impactful to me. And I think it would be impactful to people who saw it to see what we currently have, what it actually is right now, and what we are talking about expanding it to. I disagree with what he says there as well, but this document is their recommendation. We don't have any requirement to follow any of these. You know, that's something we would vote on as a board. Um, so including it, the recommendations as an addendum to the plan, I don't have an issue with that. But as far as implementing these, then I wouldn't know we'd enter into discussion for that. Okay, so why don't we come back and have further discussion about this at the work session? Does that sound like a good plan? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we'll table it for tonight. Um, and I would just like to amend the motion to approve the June special meeting minutes um, for the purpose of a work session. I forget the date. I don't have it written um, down. I, I, had a, I needed to abstain because I was not 14. present. 14th? 6-14-2022. So we're, you weren't present for the meeting before that either, right? No, it was just that one. This, um, well, the, there was one in the morning. There was. Oh, yes. It was. The, okay, yeah, so you want to amend that for both of those yeah, special know. meetings? Are we sure on that date? It's under the minutes here. The 21st? Here. June 14th special meeting and June 14th special meeting for the work session. So, you know what, we can, if you want to include these in the minutes as amended, I can do so. Yeah, why don't we do that? All right. And I would abstain for both of those because I did All not. Right. I think I had that prior. I think we're appointment. on good footing doing it this way. Do we need to make a motion to amend that motion? Just, uh, just let's just. Um, Let's rescind the previous amendment. Uh, I hate amending amendments. amendments. Yeah. Let's rescind the previous motion to approve these minutes. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to rescind the motion to approve the June 21st, 2022 minutes. Okay. Trustee regular meeting minutes. Second. Seconded Second. by Swedek. Israel? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. And then I'm let's make a motion to amend them, including your abstention from the June 14th meeting. Well, we should just do the amended now, right? Yeah, we'll just amend the minutes to do to reflect that. There's a bunch, there's other amendments in there. Yeah, we're, we're accepting the amended so minutes. I'd like to make a motion to accept the amended minutes for the regular trustee meeting from June 21st, 2022. Second. Seconded by Swedek. As um, amended. As amended. Second. <laughs> Round two. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. And I said I'm at a table 25 River Road. I haven't heard yet back from the prosecutor's office. So I have nothing further. Martha. You know what? I don't know what I did with my copy of the fun status. Oh, I have one for you. Oh, thank you. I don't know my copy. I didn't make it yet. 
Currently, the township has $6,277,766.26, of which $1,066,577.49 are in pooled investments and $5,211,188.77 are in primary checking. Very good. Thank you, Martha. Our invest, our, our uh, Star Ohio is, is doing a little better as far as interest to monthly. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. We're getting interest on those ARP funds as well, right? Uh, that's included in the Westfield checking okay. interest statement. Perfect. All right. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills for $94,614.50. Seconded by Astral. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Anybody from the audience? Was it at your birthday today? No. Tomorrow. Aw, happy birthday. Aw. Very good. To have my birthday glow on. <laughs> Anybody else? Sure. Um, so I just I'm gonna have you approach the podium oh, so the yes, people okay. virtually can hear you. All right, lovely. Make it a little more formal. Could you repeat your name again? I'm sorry. Yes, Natasha Kalis, 1809 Ridge Road. And I just want to make a comment about the um, comprehensive survey recommendations. I had been following along throughout the entire process and I reviewed the presentation from OHM even before they made the survey questions or even reviewed the survey, they already started to discuss things like adopting the future land use map. And it feels like looking back at some of their old materials, they already had some boilerplate recommendations that they were going to make regardless of what the survey results said. When we came to the results meeting, it didn't appear that the survey results were really applied to what the recommendations were. Everybody voted against conservation districts, you know, the, the, the developments. People want R2 to be increased. That's clearly stating, please, no more developments. And the future land use map has miles of developments scheduled out on that future land use map. That's not what we want anymore. It was something we discussed in 2015. We tried a couple of them and they didn't work out. We decided we need to put some more guardrails on that, some of the design standards and really some more zoning regulations. So there's no more gray areas about where the water goes, how is the land actually being conserved? Who owns that land? How is it accessible? And how it will be preserved in the future, or can that be sold to be redeveloped? There are very, there's lots of gray areas within that zoning code that were not addressed. His recommendation to do design of lights and building materials is great, but that's very cookie cutter and not exactly what our, we were asking for. I mean, we're asking to preserve our land, and there really wasn't recommendations to that. So to say we want to adopt the future, the future land use map. That map had way too much development for what we all said we wanted. So we cannot adopt that map as is. That map was not presented to the public. It was not discussed. It was not shown to anybody. So we cannot adopt that based on the results that we received because the results we received, there are discrepancies. People would like to have enhancements to town center. Page 21 indicates we would like to grow town center, but to the west not east. It indicates we'd like to have more walking abilities, more parking, and more development of what we already have enhancing that town center rather than expanding. I mean, there's a lot of points that were made that didn't get talked about that aren't part of that recommendation. And I feel like he didn't quite read our full, I don't know if he read the comprehensive plan completely or all of the zoning codes based after he did the survey. Like I'm very concerned that he didn't specify his recommendations to what we have already. It looked a lot like boilerplate information and we should go through those recommendations and review them in greater detail and say, does this actually apply to what we want? 
and go through those. It's your guys' job to decide, is this appropriate? Accept, reject, use or not. But we don't have to accept that. It was also concerning to hear that the committee didn't get to have any say in the recommendations. They were presented with the information in a public setting. They didn't have any way to speak about the recommendations of what they would like. And there was talks of wanting to amend the future land use map at that moment. So again, the people that were supposed to participate on behalf of the community did not get any input in that. So it's very concerning that somebody who maybe already had their mind up, already kind of been, has been through this process before, slapped us with some boilerplate information and just said, here you go, here you go. This is, this is what we do for other people just like you, but really didn't take into consideration what we truly wanted. And what those results actually said, like did he even have time to process the results and match that with a specific fact or recommendation? It didn't appear to me that that happened at all. So it was very, I think that you need to spend more time as trustees looking at the recommendations and writing your own memorandum of how you feel the interpretation of those surveys should be looked at. Because those are going to go to the zoning commission. Those are going to be the things that they act on and they're gonna take direction from you. The recommendations don't mean anything unless you stamp your approval. Thank you. Anyone else? Was there supposed to be another meeting with the steering committee after the recommendations came? Nikki Long, um, 1941 Parker. Um, echoing what Natasha had said, I, I just, um, you know, I went through Arthur's presentations today, the one from February 22nd, and um, the one from March 29th, and both of them reference that the role of the steering committee is to, amongst other things, review the recommendations um, from OHM after the survey has been put together. And so my request uh, from you is that you hold a public hearing um, before you decide what you're going to do with OHM's recommendation. And you know, if only for the steering committee members who, you know, would choose to attend and say, hey, look, you know, we, for some reason, we didn't get to do this step, you know, even though it was outlined that this was one of their roles. Um, I would be curious to know what the steering committee members who, who were here for six, nine months, you know, deliberating this, what would their um, interpretation of OHM's recommendations be, and you know, would they um, modify any of them? You know, recommend them for modification? Would they just outright reject them or approve them, et cetera? So I would be interested in hearing from them. So I would ask that you would have a public hearing um, to at least hear from them. You know, in addition to the public. So. Um, you know, the only other question I wanted to ask was um, to Melissa. You know, I, I know you had said, Melissa, that you had queried, you know, about 220 people about the um, school rezoning and that you, you know, I, I know you relied on that and the future use map. I, I'm curious if you, how you determine those who those folks would be? Were they just people that called you about another issue or did you seek them out? Yeah, I have your records request, you'll get my records and then you'll, you'll have all of that information. Okay. Um, it, yeah, did you happen to ask um, or query anyone who would be directly affected by the future use map? You know, because I know you talked about, you referenced it, that the school, part of the school property at least was included in the future use map. Did you query anyone else uh, who would be affected by that future use map? I don't think I understand what you're asking me. So the future use map, it includes the school. It also includes expansion of 
So are you asking me if I spoke to anybody from the school? I'm asking you if you spoke to anyone else, any other um, property owners that would be affected by the expansion of the B2 district. In by that the, vicinity or as a whole? As a whole. I spoke to some members of the chamber. Okay. I spoke to the church across the street, the pastor there, because okay. we had a conference about something else. I spoke to several people. I don't recall every single person that I spoke to. Okay. Um, you will get the records that I, I have, um, and I will do my due diligence and get those to you. But I just had conversation with a lot of people. And okay. It was conversation. It wasn't text. It wasn't email. It okay. was conversation in different places throughout Hinkley. Okay. I didn't go knock on doors and businesses. Okay. I did make mention a chamber meeting that I was looking for opinions. Um, I talked to people at Foster's. I talked to people, and I said this publicly. I talked to mm -hmm. people at Happy Dudes. I talked to people all over. Okay. Um, there are, you know, I, I've looked at the future use map, and I know there's a lot of focus on the school, including the school. Um, but in that expansion of the town center, it also includes the town excuse me, township buildings here. I'm not sure why. Um, and then it also to the north expands on the east side of Ridge and on the west side. And there's 13 parcels that would be affected if that future use map was um, adopted, I would say, again, you know, reconfirmed. Um, so basically 13 parcels that are R1 that would arbitrarily just have their zoning change to B2. Um, I, th I think that is um, extremely irresponsible to do to people. Um, I'm not sure what the ramifications are of, you know, a township or frankly, any municipality just changing someone's zoning code um, from underneath them. But I think it's... Are you, I, I'm not understanding you. So you're saying that the, the, the parcels on the northern end of our business district... Are you insinuating that their zoning would just change because of the future land use map or because of the decision made with regard to the school? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying their, the decision would have anything to do with what happened to the school. What I'm saying is the future use map that's in the 2015 plan, in, it, it, is, it, it includes um, the school parcel. And, and so because that has been brought up so many times, I really looked at the future use map and saw that it expands to the north and includes 13 more parcels than what is zoned B2 right now. So, so right now the B2 zoning, yeah. So the future use map now in, envelops 13 more parcels north. What, what part was irresponsible? I think that if... The township adopts that, readopts it, or reaffirms that future use map. That basically sets the stage for any of those parcels, any and all, really, of those parcels, either individually or as a whole, to just have their zoning changed from out from under them to B2. And I don't think that's right. That way. It doesn't work out from underneath them. If you saw the process well, with the map amendment for the school. So there's sure. a legal process outlined by by Ohio Revised right. Code. Um, the, the bottom line is that the future land use map was approved in 2015. Mm -hmm. It is the future land use map. It yeah. has been the future land use map since 2015. But if, I guess what I'm saying is if you guys accept Arthur's recommendations, which are to change the zoning map and adopt it to that future use map, um, regardless of whether or not you actually change the zoning map, if you accept that recommendation, then it makes it harder for you to come back and say, oh, you know, we changed our mind. We, we don't want to, um, you know, we don't want to expand um, the town center anymore. I, and the recommendation is consider updating the, the zoning map to match the town center area in the future land use map. Right, which I... That was the same recommendation in 2015. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just happen overnight. It's little map amendments that generally, the way our, we have done past practice here in Hinkley Township, the property owner will come to us and ask for we don't just mm -hmm. go in and say, we're going to change that because it better suits the future land use map, or that would have been done back in 2015. Well, the town, I know that the township can um, 
you know, initiate on its own a zoning change on a parcel or a number of parcels. And so I, I just think that it, it, you know, is, I think that it's not a good idea to adopt that, um, you know, Arthur's recommendation to um, look at expanding the zoning or matching uh, the current zoning for B2 to that future use map. I think that's a bad idea. I understand what you're saying, and it mimics what Natasha's saying, but the mm -hmm. bottom line end of the day is the 2015 comprehensive plan is already telling us to do that, whether we adopt the, this or not. Right, one. right, but we did take a survey. But this survey did not include the future land use. Right, at, right. So really, how can you adopt a recommendation to change zoning based yeah. on a, if you didn't even ask about it? We didn't ask about it. And that right. was something that I brought up at, at the June, right. uh, June 14th steering committee meeting, that we didn't even talk about that. In mm -hmm. the survey. I understand what you're saying, but regardless of whether we adopted that section in the memorandum or not, mm -hmm. the suggestion is still there from 2015. Sure, sure. But it, it makes it... Um, if you accept that recommendation, then it makes it harder. I would think uh, it. It. I understand the plan is the way the plan is, and it was adopted in 2015. But if in 2022 you affirm, reaffirm that future use map and you give it more credibility, makes it harder down the road to then go back and make a decision that maybe you know conflicts with it. I understand what you're saying. And I respectfully disagree okay. because I think that it doesn't give it any more steam. It's still the same recommendation for 2015. Yeah. Is that, can it, I speak to this? Just sure. Because I understand what you're looking at and I understand how you, it's perceived at this point in time, mm -hmm. but we, we had not done a comprehensive plan update since 2003. Mm -hmm. It began in 2014 and ended in 2015. So what has changed in between then and now too is there's like two more homes built on that north side. Those mm -hmm. didn't exist at that time. Okay. Uh, elementary school mm -hmm. did not exist mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. But as, as a planner, as a planner, you look not five years, 10 years, 15, you look 40 years out, mm -hmm. which is what all these plans do. It's very incremental. There would be no reason to change the zoning code or the zoning map unless, uh, as Melissa stated, a property owner came forward and presented uh, a request. And as you watched with the, the um, elementary school, there has to be a rationale. It has to be approved by two boards. And in this case, it was not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, all the reasons for and against seem very pertinent. And at this point in time, that would be the same discussion that would occur on those parcels. Mm -hmm. It, you know, to your point, though, with, with those new homes there, it, it may not be the time to expand the zoning map. And I'm not sure... That that you know, I'm not sure Arthur got in the car or anyone Martha, got in the yeah. car and looked at brand new homes being built. I will tell you something. Back in 20, 20, 2008, when we um, discussing with Brunswick City about a potential jet, and 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 I, I mean, I have a degree in planning, so I'm I'm talking about my people. Um, but we looked, we we looked at what had. I mean, I think it was $25,000 between us and Brunswick um, that, that had been spent on this JED district to look at the 130th, 303 area. First thing I do when I look at it is I'm like, you've got the cemetery in the JED district. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're looking at these yeah. letters, it's a business. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, you can't, you can't have this. So again, using that as an example to say it's a far out vision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do not look in detail mm -hmm. at the homes, the people, the things that are happening there, but these people do. Mm -hmm. And so they're, and you guys do. And you bring it to them and you say, these are things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. The planners don't see that. They don't view it like that. Sure. And 
it this is just it's it's just a thing. Yeah. It it's a mm. it's a guide perhaps. But I've seen I don't know 35 40 years of comprehensive plans and I'm not sure we've done 5% of the things that they exist in there. Well, here's my question, Martha. Um, maybe you will be able to answer this better is Melissa just said, we don't just rezone something. Someone has to request. What about like, what is currently B2 right now? What's in the red here is, you know, like the property right across the street from town hall behind mm -hmm. the historical mm -hmm. building. That's a residence. Did they request that to be rezoned? Because that is currently B2. That was done way back. I want to say that was done in 2003 or 95. Richard, help me. You know, that was 95. That's what I thought. 95 when that town center district was established. And so we're talking 17 years ago. No, I'm sorry. 27 I'm years ago. Um, 27 years ago because... It, it didn't push those people out. All it did was it made that property a non-conforming use as a residential. Okay. And the same with uh, the same moving down to the east. Mm -hmm. All those properties and the properties heading north. Mm -hmm. They became non-conforming residential. Much like 130th has been for Decades and decades, and there's still people living there. They're not moving out of their houses. They have no intention to. Mm -hmm. And what happens? So, what if happens if someone has, you know, a, a residential use uh, parcel that's owned residential, but you know, it, it does get changed. It, it's considered a non-conforming non use. And and then and then, you know, what they can remain as long as that use does not change. What if those folks want to sell? What if they want to sell it? If they want to sell it, I don't think if the use they would first have to ask to have it rezoned. No, 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 you wouldn't you wouldn't go back. I'm trying to think what no, I'm saying happens. if it, it once the use ceases for 2 years. And that's yeah, for 2 years then it reverts to zoning. If someone wanted to sell something as a residential property, as long as that use was maintained, it would continue to be a residential. So, continues with the property now. Yeah. Know. So, but they would have to sell it within two years. No, 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 no. The use, the use would have to discontinue. No, he said because I asked that question at one of the meetings that we were here on, and he said that they cannot sell it as residential. They have to sell it as business. They, they that? do. That's what they do. Said. But the yeah. use can remain. You can use it either it, way. It's considered okay. It is considered a non-conforming use yeah. in a business okay. district, mm -hmm. and that if it's transferred and the it's use is maintained, yeah, it it maintains itself okay. as a, a residential property. But if the use is, as Tom said, if the use is voluntarily mm -hmm. uh, discontinued. For two years, then it reverts back. Now, I'm not to say a residential property owner may not choose to sell their property to a business owner, mm -hmm. and then it's automatically going to go to the use in which it's it's zoned. It's, that is a that is a um, property owner's. Uh, th but you know, I would hesitate to think that this board would change the zoning on property owners that are currently residential um, for the point as Monique said that we already have a tremendous amount of property that's already zoned that way that's not being utilized mm -hmm. but it, it's just to have a plan you have plans for your kids when they're born right yeah you, you have dreams you have plans you have goals you have all these things for them and that that is what a comprehensive plan I, I know it's not a fair analogy mm -hmm. but that's this you know it's this and it's just so you start a college fund right you start a college fund when they're one you yeah, one and this is kind of laying out okay when these people aren't here when mm -hmm. the steering committee aren't here that this is the conversation that was 
had and discussed. Okay. And I, and I hear what both of you guys are saying. You're saying, why would we consider this if it wasn't a part of this process? And if we don't, the, consider, the consideration to update our zoning map to match this future land use map is exactly the same regardless in the 2015 comprehensive plan. It's telling us the exact same thing. I'm not saying I'm against uh, or for adopting this memorandum. I'm, I'm just saying either way, that's the consideration. Mm -hmm. well, we can accept parts of it, right? Right, we, we can. can. Or we can change the language two, in it. Three, four, mm -hmm. We can change language in it. We can do whatever we want. That's why we only got it this morning. That's why I said, let's have further conversation mm -hmm. about it because this is an in-depth. But is that what he's saying document. here? Change, change the zoning map? It, to make everything it, business that's listed in the future it, land use map? He's saying consider it, it, updating the zoning map. It is, so that our zoning commission really and that would never happen. That, that's but that's already been a whole lot. I mean, that's just a ridiculous no, it's saying recommendation that, that, to your point. It's just ridiculous. My whole request with what's incorporated is the survey results are brought in, so that's brought in the next decision makers. <laughs> so down the road I absolutely agree. Thank you. Yeah, I think it, it it becomes a public document, right? It can be utilized in whatever way um, people want to interpret it or, or do this. But, I mean, this Bill Thorne, who used to be a Medina County prosecutor for a long, long time, he's since retired, but that was the legal counsel that this school that Chris Wolney brought in with them. And he always did all of our zoning uh before he retired, and now Brian does it, but he said it the best. He says, the zoning code, if there are a lot of recommendations in the 2003 plan, the 2015 plan, in conversations that cured his steering, that the zoning commission needs to act on, or even that there's enforcement that needs to be done that's already in the code. Right. There's a lot of things that need to be done. And the very least of these is putting a priority on expanding mm. a business district that's already faced with challenges and underuse. I wasn't important. I mean, I I agree, but it's 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 part of his recommendation. It says update the zoning district map for town center. The survey showed support for the development of the town center district. The zoning map should match the limits of the town center shown on the future land use map. So, I mean, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think it's a high priority because there's it's already underutilized, but it still made it into his top five. And I I, I don't know why, because like Natasha said, I, it, these recommendations to me don't really reflect the survey results, but that's just me. And I've, I've, I've spoken Did way too long. Did say the survey? It says the survey showed support for the development of... of Town center. Well, that's exactly why it, it, it showed support. I don't know that it showed support that for the development. I think it showed support for enhancement. So um, but whatever. What but happens in these processes yeah, with surveys right. yeah. and, and limited information and what if? So if someone would have said in and, and I'm not saying that the survey could have or should have, but when you have a process like this. Say, okay, um, do we do we expand the town center district, right? Even if it means that we're going to take 13 homes and make them non-conforming. Mm -hmm. I don't know that the survey results would have been the same. I don't think, I think right. people right. would have stopped and thought about it. But you don't have it. Sometimes you don't have that ability in a survey to, it's like voting, right? Well, you don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other question we th I think we emailed or spoke about is the uh, the green space levy. Right. Uh, you, we all support green space. Right, depending on but, the cost. But there, yeah. So what was it cost? Is it going to cost us fifty dollars a year? Right. Is it going to cost us five hundred dollars a year? Well, to get to get an accurate number for decision making, you need. They have that in there now, but this board does that all the time when they talk to people, right? They're going to look at these numbers and there's caveats and all of them. And they know the other considerations that go into play when they're making decisions, as does the zoning commission. 
Um, the biggest yeah. concern Go about ahead. opening up. The biggest concern about opening up the business district is just that somebody recently did ask to rezone that was potentially within that square, the school district. However, that was voted down for many reasons because it does not align with how we want the township to be right now. If we state, oh yeah, we do want that to expand out, that opens that door again for them to resubmit and potentially litigate us if we don't allow that to happen this time. So no, we should not adopt that because there's somebody who's financially interested in that happening right now. I mean, they are financially motivated to do it by 3x. So they told us that the numbers are three times what they could get, what their parcel is worth right now. It's a big deal to them. So we need, if we've already decided that that does not align with what we want now, which it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily expand us to the east, which is what we said we wanted to do. We want to expand where development is already happening. We want Township Center to be enhanced by adding parking, walkability, and develop the parcels that aren't that are already zoned that aren't that aren't developed at all. There's no need to go east. There's no need to go to that parcel. However, if we adopt this, there's their in, and this feels a little bit like a you know a very easy road for them to slide into. We've already been through the process to say at this time, it doesn't make sense. Um, in your note here, Melissa, to the whole township, um, in your due diligence, that parcel could be connected to a very large development that's already 87 acres. That parcel being connected gives that parcel almost 100 acres, which is the magic number for the conservation development, which is what we don't want. The township said, no, thank you. Thanks, but no thanks. But that validates my vote. They can't have that without water and sewer. It's a <laughs> very critical piece. Of, there, right? So it's a yeah, very right. critical piece to that, which is but we don't being told is you can't run sewer through there. So that's. Well, it's very concerning to hear that that was already talked about, that there's an 87 acre parcel and it was talked about behind the scenes that that parcel could be connected. The theory it's actually in your email here. I talked about it publicly that my fear was that that 87 acre property had stopped everything. We had a concept plan and everything had halted when this- to quote, your article, to quote your written correspondence, the school property could be purchased and connect to the 87 acre property for a mass development in town center. Good. We don't want that. I know that. That's we why voted why for that. To do business. That's <laughs> the reasons why I voted for it to do business. That's exactly why I voted the way I did. Because I didn't want that. And it's, it is possible. I don't have any inkling whether it's going to happen or not happen, but it's a possibility. And it was one of the reasons why I voted for that property to go business. Well, it also could have been combined with the property and turned into a restaurant or something and get into that 100 acres and just had less homes, but had a business as part of that 100 acre. There's lots of, there's there lots, lots of different possibilities absolutely. of things that could happen. Absolutely. And we can villainize any way. But my biggest concern, I know that we don't want to be here all night long, but my biggest concern with this is in his um, one of his suggestions is consider updating the zoning map to match the town center area in the future land use map. And that is the biggest red flag in these recommendations for me <coughs> because Melissa, you stated your very first reason you stated that you voted yes for the school was it, it says it in the future land use map. That's what, that was your that's number our one. Directive. That was your number. But, so I went if to it's, people. but if it's no longer, but it, it would still be. It's if already it in is no longer map. in the future land use map, but now it matches our zoning map, what's to stop that from happening? That is why when I read this today, I just sat here and scratched my head and I thought, let me actually see it. Let me see what's already developed versus what's currently zoned. And let's look at the future land use map to it. And these are huge, huge differences. So that that is my biggest red flag in it is it no longer becomes the future. If we follow this, it no longer becomes the future land use map. It's for updating the zoning map. 
in which case you can't say no to someone coming in. Well, the, the directive to use the comprehensive plan future land use map comes from Ohio Revised Code when making a, a map amendment. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is I understand the concern about this language about changing the zoning to adopt the future land use map. But what I'm trying to portray to all of you is that that directive is already in the 2015 comprehensive plan. Right. And I'm not saying that I'm for or against this, this memorandum because I haven't read it the way I would like to read it. I like to read things multiple times. I've only read it once. So I will go through it just like I'm sure you guys will. Um, but that's the directive regardless of whether we adopt this memorandum or not because it's in the 2015 comprehensive plan. Well, the con it doesn't say to change the zoning in the 2015 plan. It says plan. throughout the, the comprehensive future, plan. The future land use map. And to Jack's point, a couple of weeks ago, there's no timeline on the future land use. No, it's but just, it says in the comprehensive plan that all that we should look to the future land use map for those changes. You know, I don't even know that you have to, I mean, to everyone's point, I don't think you have to adopt all the recommendations. Right. The future land map, it exists, right? Mm -hmm. It's there. Mm -hmm. um, if you want but, to utilize it, you can. It, well, I mean, but it is, I mean, I'd have to look back at the 2015 plan and that put it in the context. Right? Well, this isn't even... That's what happened a couple weeks ago. You guys voted in this where it went. And even in the future, that will still be the case, whether it's adopted or not. And again, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but you, as a trustee, you guys get a vote. And that's, you know, you're elected officials and you vote the way you want to vote, and that's how it should be. And, and again, based on a... This wasn't an entire comprehensive plan uh, update. It was an audit. It was an audit. Um, and to be fair, that the future land use map, as I've said multiple times, was not even a part of the conversation. Yeah, that's, the survey. that's so why I'm wondering if this is why even a valid recommendation. <laughs> but the recommendation is still is already in the 2015 plan. So even if we take it out, it's still there in the 2015 plan. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to look at. I don't uh, recall that. I mean, I'm not saying you're in, in, not correct. I just, I just can't uh, visualize the verbiage on that. It part. felt like the majority of OHM's recommendations were less focused on the comprehensive plan and more focused on so the right. zoning condition yeah. to do what, so what you collectively, the community, right. To do. That's mm -hmm. what I think right. the key is, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. that is the direction that this needs to right. be forwarded for it to be productive, not to create more, more problems. Right. You know, I, I, I mean, sometimes that's people create problems just to not have to address the things that they can actually do. And, and I think when it came to the school zoning commission, voted the way the public wanted them to. I think they thought of a lot of different things. I think the board thought of a lot yeah, of different I'm not things. It, I'm just saying it, it, it seemed like it was in line with what the general sentiment was of the people who were in the room. Is that fair? I no. Yeah, I think. No. Anyone no, else from the audience? Based on what was in the plan. The, I thought it was only the When they voted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Angela Chesnick, 2362 Country Brook Drive. I just wanted to make one comment. Um, you said that they don't just go and change zoning. But in a meeting that was like about two months ago, Marcus actually presented changes that he wanted to make to a piece of property or a little part of the property that to actually own. change zoning. Nobody owned that property. It was a hunt, I think, a one acre. Property. I thought it was a part of another property. No, that's that, not the that, one was, that was no one somebody owns it. Owns it. It, was it was behind the school. Premier. Mm -hmm. Was it the it island. two parcels? Uh, yeah. No, it was one parcel. It's the island. It was part of a uh, somebody's property. Okay. And Marcus well, made the recommendations. Joe Premier is and the recommendation was because 
the rest of Joe's property already was business. He had had conversation with Joe. I think he had said that publicly. That he didn't, he didn't mention that business. And he thought for planning purposes that if, if the map amendment were to pass for the school, then you would have this piece of property that was landlocked residential, which makes it non-conforming. And it puts us in a, in a precarious I, I understand that, but he, when he made but that presentation, said no. right, but when he made the presentation, he's the one that came up with changing it. And right. he said that the landowner did not ask him to change it. You're right. That's, I know. And I, I specifically remember him saying that. I'll have to look into that. I, I don't recall. I thought he had said he had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. He said. That, and statute allows three methods to rezone the property. One is that the Board of Trustees can apply for rezoning, a property owner can apply for rezoning, and the Zoning Commission can change the zoning. So right. Any one of those three methods um, can make an, it, it can result in an right. application for a zoning change to your property. But it's not okay. a typical occurrence that we as trustees or the Zoning Commission no, come in and no, try. Primarily, it's a property owner. Right. Yeah. In, in I just wanted to make that point. Anybody else? Heidi Gutwein, Mattingly Road. Um, just a brief comment on a uh, letter written um, into the Hinkley record recently um, insulting Jack and Monique. Um, I found it very distasteful, and there was no place for that in our community newsletter. And it was signed by a former trustee, and that's the key right there. You're a former trustee. You were not voted back in. Take it as a hint. Heidi, just for clarification for the public, when you say community newsletter, it wasn't the that township the newsletter. Right. Okay. The Hinkley Road. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Anyone else? Okay, this time I'd like to make a motion to adjourn at 8.31 p.m. Second. Seconded by Asheril. All in favor say aye. 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 I don't get a vote by saying Oh, thank you. Do you want, do you want to put this on the um, board?